The mistake I see most people make is that they just pick up some random probiotic supplement off the shelf at the grocery store and expect it to do something great. But then they get disappointed because it doesn't do anything. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to choose the best probiotic supplement for lupus to help start reversing inflammation fast. I'll review some scientific research and go in depth on how my patients use microbiome hacking to resolve symptoms. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks, without the need for complex or costly interventions. This material that you're about to watch is taken straight out of my MindGut Immunity Academy, where people just like you learn how to beat their lupus symptoms for good. Now I'm going to show you this brief video about how to select the best probiotic supplement when you have an inflammatory disease, such as lupus. I'm going to show you what to look for on the labels, how to save money, and what exactly works and what to avoid. In addition, I'm going to give you some very useful tips on exact dosages and frequencies and how to plan your approach for addressing lupus. Now before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. These are must-see videos for anyone with lupus looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's really helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now, onto the topic of probiotic supplements for lupus. The mistake I see most people make is that they just pick some random probiotic off the shelf at the grocery store and expect it to do something great. But then they get disappointed because it doesn't do anything. And you may be thinking, are probiotics even useful? For lupus? Now I'd like to point out this research article from a few years ago that shows altered intestinal flora is closely associated with the immune dysfunction seen in lupus. You shouldn't be surprised by this because 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is in your intestines. So when you have an immune disease such as lupus, you can be sure that there's also something wrong with your gut. So before we dive in, if you're serious about finding the right probiotics, for lupus and achieving results fast, don't forget to grab my supplements guide where I walk you through the specific brand choices that have helped my clients with lupus. Achieve health within six weeks. You can grab it at the link below the video and I know it'll help you so much. The link will take you to a page where you enter in your email to receive a free training on how to reverse lupus. Everything you need to know is in there, including a free supplement guide with specific probiotic recommendations Tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who have reversed their conditions for good and are now healthy. It comes with a complete actionable game plan for how you can do this yourself at home. So just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. So be sure to check it out. Now check out this video I recorded earlier explaining the concept of probiotics for lupus. Believe it or not, if we take the sum total of all the genes in our body, only 1% is actually human. The other 99% come from bacteria and other microbes, mostly living in our intestines and airways. For the people that like to blame genetics, you may not even have terrible genetics. Your genetics may be just fine. You may just have a bacterial imbalance and that's what's causing a significant problem. Again, this is another thing that most doctors don't talk about. And here you have ever-changing ratio of good versus bad bacteria. So let me give you a few examples. We've seen this with depression, We've seen it with obesity, we've seen this with IBS, we see it with inflammatory bowel disease and other autoimmune conditions such as lupus, rheumatoid, MS, psoriasis, eczema, and chronic allergies. In each of these conditions, bad bacteria plays a significant role, so you have to get rid of them and replace them with good bacteria. There's a pretty famous study from China that shows if you take a stool sample from a depressed individual and feed it to a mouse, that mouse that was once very social and happy and well-adjusted becomes closed off and anxious and depressed. Here's another study which looked at a mom and her daughter. The mom was a marathon runner, thin, lean, and in shape. She needed a stool transplant and her daughter donated the specimen. Her daughter was 30, 40 pounds overweight, not really in shape. Over the course of the next three months, the marathon runner mom gained 40 pounds after receiving the bacteria from her overweight daughter. That's pretty powerful stuff. By the way, at Harvard, they're using stool transplants for weight loss now, and even depression. Similarly, 
There are several studies from University of California which show that if you take a stool sample from an inflammatory disease patient, you can induce the same illness through a fecal microbiota transplant. This is true for most inflammatory conditions such as lupus, IBS, Crohn's, colitis, rheumatoid, multiple sclerosis, eczema, psoriasis, fatty liver, and even allergies. So this brings us to the section on probiotic concepts, also known as microbiome hacking. Before we dive in, I want to clear up some misinformation about probiotics. A lot of people spend an inordinate amount of time talking about colony forming units, number of strains, types of strains. Some even talk about buying refrigerated versions versus soil based spore forms. And there's even companies now that will take a sample of your stool, analyze it, and send you custom designed blends. And I can tell you as a physician, I've studied over 300 scientific articles on this subject. And my findings can be summarized as the following. The three main bacteria in a good probiotic are Lactobacillus, Saccharomyces, and Bifidiobacterium. And of these three, Lactobacillus and Bifidiobacterium are the most important with the best scientific evidence. Next, it's important that you introduce good microbes into your system at least twice a day, but ideally four times a day. So even once a day is not enough. Also, as you introduce good microbes into your system, you need to get rid of the old microbes. And the way you do this is to have bowel movements, ideally two to four times a day. Turnover is important. Most people just assume if they take a probiotic, they'll be fine. But if you're not constantly expelling waste and only taking probiotic maybe once a day, then that's not enough. And in my opinion, they may be missing out on a full potential of these beneficial microbes. So don't get too obsessed over the number of strains or colony forming units and don't waste your money buying expensive probiotic supplements, which are generally not useful. The frequency of probiotic intake matters more. So which probiotic is the best? Well, if you're looking for the most affordable option, then yogurt or fermented foods, and you only need a spoonful. If you're allergic to dairy, you can also try non-dairy yogurt. Now, yogurt is fine, so is fermented foods, but some people do better just taking a probiotic supplement. There are lots of probiotic supplements out there. I would keep things simple and just get on one that's affordable and comes from a reputable brand. I'll drop some recommendations below so that you can take a look. Just a reminder, the most important factor is not usually the number of strains, but rather the frequency of administration. And this is the one thing that most people miss. You want to keep introducing good microbes into your system throughout the day, not just once, but two to four times a day. In fact, you want to constantly introduce good microbes into your system so that as your body gets rid of the old microbes, the new microbes have a chance to flourish and populate. So remember I said there was scientific data. Here it is, a small list of conditions that improve with probiotic intake. Eczema, psoriasis, allergies, UTIs, IBS, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and colitis, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, candida, GERD, viral illnesses including flu and COVID, fatty liver, autism, multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. If you're looking to solve inflammation, then probiotics may be helpful. Okay, before I conclude this section, I have a couple things to say about yogurt. If you're vegan, obviously this is a no-go. And if you have a dairy allergy and can't tolerate it, then fine. But if your only issue is lactose intolerance or fear of dairy, then hear me out. Lactose content in yogurt is lower than that of milk. Yogurt contains bacteria that helps break down lactose. Fat-free yogurt is great, but make sure that it doesn't have any thickeners or sweeteners. If you like full fat yogurt, then grass-fed source is probably best. Yogurt still has casein milk protein, which can cause allergies in some people. This is prevented by getting specific types of cow's milk yogurt called A2 or switching to goat's milk yogurt. So if you want to try dairy yogurt, just keep in mind these four things. If you're in doubt, just take a supplement capsule. I have clients that do both and many of them do fine just adding a bit of yogurt. As you probably know by now, I usually recommend avoiding all dairy altogether but yogurt does have its benefits, especially if you choose wisely. It's easy and it's helpful for getting probiotics, and all you need is a spoonful two to four times a day. 
If you do this, and remember, you also want to have at least two to four bowel movements a day. If you do this along with the fiber, and maybe even a stool softener the first couple of days, you'll start to notice within a week that the population of bacteria in your GI tract will start to change and many of your inflammatory disorders and allergies and immune dysfunction and digestive problems will change. If you want to go into detail with this, I have a blog post called Decoding Milk and Dairy. It's part of a larger series that describes the nutritional profiles of controversial food groups like eggs, fish, and meat in general. I realize that there are very strong opinions regarding the healthiness of these foods. So I try to stick with the facts and give you what I think is the safe zone of functioning for every day. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now I wanna know what types of probiotics have you tried and did they work? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, help support my channel by sharing this video with fellow loved ones and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips on lupus. This is Dr. Chanu Dasari with the MindGut Immunity Clinic and I'll see you next time.